making the Oasis days. He's flying solo now, Mr Noel Gallagher. Great to see you, Noel. Thank you for coming on. Thank you very much. Uh, man, you've written some great songs. Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> um, but before we talk about what you're doing now and all that, I read this in the papers this week. I want to check if it's true. Simon Cowell phoned you up, offered you the job yeah. uh, as be to be one of the X Factor judges in this current series. Yes, he did, to replace him. Yeah. What a... Re what a <laughs> I imagine an unexpected phone call to receive. Yeah, well, do, are we, because he's something to do with Sony Records and I've got friends there and somebody phoned me and said, Simon Cowell's after your number, shall I give it to him? And I said, OK, all right, whatever. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, did you think what he might have wanted it for? What did you um, think he wanted it for? I thought initially he might have wanted a song yeah, of oh, some yeah. description, which is what I do, you know, yeah. and, I, and I was like, you know, all right. OK. And, uh, <laughs> and then I thought... <laughs> Um, he might want us to sit in on, you know, like they do those where they have a guest thing for one show, in, oh, like yeah. in Manchester or something. So and I they're going to cover the music that you wrote, maybe. I'll do that. I'll just put a lot of fat people through or something like that. Okay. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, that's, that's good of you. That's good of you. Turns out he, he calls anyway and he says, "Oh no, yeah, we're, we're rebranding the show next year, and you know we need we need an alpha male." And I was like, "Okay." And uh, he said, oh, "We need someone to replace me, and your name's come up in the, you know, in the meetings." And I was going, "Nah, you don't really want me to do it." And he was very, very insistent for a good twenty minutes. But I was in, I was, I was in on my own with my four-year-old son Donovan, uh, and he was kind of watching someone on the telly, and he was following me around the kitchen, going, "Can I speak to Simon?" <laughs> <laughs> and I was kind of on the phone, going. Plenty of pirates, come on. <laughs> and he was going, and in the end he was crying, yeah. going, I want to speak to Simon. <laughs> and Simon Cowell's going, uh, have I called you in a bad moment? <laughs> <laughs> you make Simon Cowell a lot posher than he actually is. He's so posh. But then when I told... Obviously, I, 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 I couldn't do it, I didn't want to do it. Were you I, tempted, though? Were you tempted for a no, little...? No, no, it's, I, they don't want me on that show. I'm, I'm useless at that. You I'm like the show, though, don't you? Yeah, yeah, well, it was the one show that experienced me and my imaginary 11-year-old daughter <laughs> who sat <laughs> yeah, in here. Yeah. We are, we are, we are on a again? Saturday night. I don't mind it. People take it too seriously about its effect on music and that, I think. But, um, but my 11-year-old, she freaked out when I told her I wasn't going to do it. She was like... Cos she told all her mates at school, you know. Oh. And uh, she was just like, well, you're going to do it. And I was like, I don't know. Really so when I came and I blew it out, she was went, but it's the X Factor! Presumably, <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, she... And she... I said, I know, but Louis Walsh. <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> Even an 11 year old has no argument for that. Um, because for her, I get, does she like your music or does she prefer the music she it's hears? It's kind of a rule in my house. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to at least feign some kind of interest in it. Yeah. My, 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 uh, yeah, she kind of, yeah, she, she doesn't like it. She does like it. <laughs> she, she, she'll like it when she gets a bit older. Uh, She's more into pop. I wouldn't really expect her to be yeah. into kind of my stuff, but she, do, like I say, it is kind of a rule. Like, but, have you listened to the new album? Have you listened to it? Yeah, yeah. What do you think? You know. Um, <laughs> hey, uh, okay. New album, Noel Gallagher, first solo album. Uh, so, sort of a surprise it's your first solo. I know you've always been in the band, but a lot of times people in bands and they still do a solo project on the side anyway and carry on yeah. with the band. But you wait until the band was over, then you. Here it is, Noel Gallagher's High Flying Birds. Uh, I've been listening to it a lot. <laughs> People don't buy the physical things so much anymore, they just download them, don't they? Well, they can... Whether they buy it or download it, it doesn't really matter. Okay. It's still uh, bloody good. Now, <laughs> so, um, let's talk then about solo life in general. You being now a solo performer and how that differs from you being an Oasis, because, sure, you know... Uh, and I want to talk to you about your relationship with Liam a bit, if I can, because it's such a weird, it seems like such a weird thing from the outside. It's very weird. Yeah, because I've met Liam and he seems perfectly nice. I've met him too. I know. <laughs> And I've met you, and you seem perfectly nice. I am brilliant. And <laughs> you both seem fairly reasonable, but obviously... We are, we, we are, and, the, and the sad thing is, we are both reasonable guys, and he's really funny. I'm brilliant. <laughs> it's great. But then there's the smashing orangey bit in the so middle. So what happens when you get together? And why is there not some kind of a, a, a common-sense voice inside either of you that says, OK, that's going to that's gonna push his buttons in the wrong way, pull back a little bit now, because there must be something where you both... And I don't think it's just him, and I don't think it's just you. Clearly, it can't just be... Who is it, then? <laughs> it's not me, and it's not him. <laughs> it's 
What's that bonehead bloke? <laughs> no, you know what I mean, though? There's a kind of a... It's something that happens... <laughs> it's something that happens when you're together. Yeah, it's, you know, back in the day, it was, it was a little bit different. And I don't, I, don't, I, don't know, I don't know why we don't get on. We just don't get on. And let's be thankful for that. Yeah. But there's obviously a regret, because in the interviews I've read with you since then, is you obviously miss, maybe not him as, you know, a, a kind of participant in your musical ventures, but at the same time, you like the idea of Oasis, and you like I the love... idea of the legacy of Oasis. Yeah. I love being in a band. You know, there's no greater feeling in the world than walking out on a, sta on a stage with your, kind of, with your mates. And, um, you know, I was in... <coughs> you know, we used to get out of the back of cars at Wembley Stadium, and there'd be, like, a hundred articulated lorries all there for you. I was come out of a... Rehearsals the other night for my tour. You know how many trucks are there? I don't know. One. <laughs> <laughs> One pathetic little truck. So you, so, you, so you missed the scale? I missed the scale of it and I missed the camaraderie of it, but, you know, we were at it for 18 years yeah. and we went from just lads on a council estate with a battered acoustic guitar and we went... We took it around the world, we went everywhere. One of the it, biggest it, bands in the world, Yeah, and it can't... Things just don't last forever. It's no. as simple as that. And it, it, the way that it ended is horrible. This is what I found strange, because you only had, like, four or five gigs or something left in, the, in that tour. I think it was three. Three, three gigs left. So if you could have just got through those three gigs, mm, yeah. it would have been quite a clean break. Yep. <laughs> but he, he, he threw fruit at me. It... <laughs> and I'm sorry, but once... Well, there's no coming back once, from that. Once the fruit basket has been yeah. tampered with... <laughs> I'm out of here. Okay. The okay. end. I have read you speaking about um, What's the Story Morning Glory and saying it's a shame because it would have been great in 2015, the anniversary of that album coming out, it would have been great to maybe, maybe go out and play that whole album for yourself and for the fans. Uh, and now I, I hear that Liam has come out, he's read those comments, and he said, you know what, I wouldn't be averse to that. Yeah. <laughs> See, I don't believe he said that. He said it. It's no, in... no, no, I know him better than you do. He said it just so you could bring it up tonight on this show, <laughs> on national television. Well, which He's I a very, 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 very clever man. Huh? <laughs> Maybe you didn't say that to him often enough. <laughs> no, that's true. No, 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 no. No. I he tweeted it as well. He's on Twitter, hasn't he? Aren't you all? <laughs> are you, uh... Are you not tempted to join the Twitterati? No, nobody needs to know what colour socks I'm wearing. Okay. It's black, by the way, but nobody needs to know what colour socks I'm wearing. I don't need to be on Facebook. I've got six friends. I'm trying to get rid of one of those. <laughs> so I can, I can count them all okay. on one hand, and uh, that's me done, then. No. So, if Liam isn't just saying it for effect, are you going to do it? Are you going to say, OK, let's put this... Let's have no fruit backstage, nothing that can trigger an incident. <laughs> And let's do What's the Story of Morning Glory. Cos I've never seen you do that live, the whole album. I'd love to see that. I fear that you're not going to let me go without me saying yes. Well, you? what's the answer, though? Is it... What's the answer, Morning Story, Morning Glory? <laughs> it, would be, it would be nice, but, we, but, but, but we're, we're not together anymore. We're not said, together anymore. No, I know you're not right now, but listen... It's like you don't go on holiday with your ex-wife, do you? <laughs> well... But... But you didn't record loads of great albums with your ex-wife, so... <laughs> he said he will, you said you want to. Right. Can we expect it? I'm not under oath here. I don't have to answer this question. You do have to answer it, but you don't have to necessarily will, stick to it in three years' time. I will straight back this all night. <laughs> I can stay here all night. Just a simple yes or no will put us all out of a misery and I can go and do a wee. So... <laughs> and I'm telling you, you're right in the line of fire, so it's in your best interest... <laughs> to settle this once and for all. It'd be great, wouldn't it? It would be... It would be great, well, yes. Well, then, just say yes. Jonathan. <laughs> Jonathan. Yes, Noel, I'm here for you. <laughs> OK, I'll tell you what. I'll do it on the day that you go work for the BBC again. Before you get carried away, I'm actually doing a film show for them in about three no, weeks' no, time. No, no, no. So, no, 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 we're going to take a no, break. No, More no, on that no, news no. when we come back. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so... <laughs> so, welcome.
welcome back. If you missed it, Oasis back together in three weeks' time. <laughs> uh, all right, so, uh, recently you met up with, if we're talking about the past and moving on from it, yeah. you met up with Damon Alburn. I did, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Of Blur. And in the old yeah. days, the press kind of stirred up a bit and you guys kind of seemed to encourage it and seemed to enjoy it. There was the big Oasis Blur rivalry and you both had digs at each other and said things. You, yeah, you were quoted more yeah, often it was than... Ma yeah, mainly me, I, got, <laughs> I have to admit. I, yeah. I did more digging than anybody yeah. else, yeah. And uh, do you, why? Is that because you enjoy doing that? You really like that kind of uh, conflict? I was high as a kite, to be okay. honest. <laughs> <laughs> so if just someone asked you, you'd say something crazy? I don't know what was going on about half yeah. the time. Yeah. <laughs> it was good, though. <laughs> <laughs> but you, did you like the whole Blur versus Oasis thing going on? Um, at the time, it was quite exciting. And uh, I, kind of, I literally bumped into him in a... Uh, in, um, in, a, in a club the other night. I haven't seen him or spoke to him for 15 years and uh, kind of walked around this corner there, bang, and there he was. And we was kind of just saying, God, wasn't it great? It wasn't music exciting at that, at that time, you know what I mean? With Hold the... on, the first moment you saw each other, was there a moment where you thought, oh, God, what am I going to say? No, because I'd kind of wanted to, I'd wanted to say, look, what about all that kind of thing? That was, that was off my head, you know what I mean? <laughs> and, um, we had a good, we had a good old chat. We had a beer together, and it was actually, it was, it was a relief. I got to say. And looking back now, I mean, did you like Blur? You just didn't want to admit it at the time. Well, you know, like I said, like I said to him, you can go around the world and, um, you know, say that you respect an artist a thousand times a day in a hundred different magazines, and it won't get printed. Call somebody a <laughs> once. <laughs> um, would you, you know what, because I loved both the bands and the music was, was, and it was an exciting time, I would love to see you guys collaborate on something. Would that happen? Could that happen? What, me and Damon? Yeah. I'm, you know, single and ready to mingle. <laughs> <laughs> Musically speaking, of course. <laughs> Great to have you here. We're going to have some music now, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very excited. Um, it's from Noel's first and current solo album, High Flying Birds. Why is the band called High Flying Birds? Just out of interest. Um, um, I was at home doing the, doing the washing up, and uh, at Peter Green's Fleetwood Mac, Man of the World, was on the radio, and uh, I thought, what if I was called Noel Gallagher something? And then uh, there's a track on a Jefferson Airplane album called High Flying Bird, and I, like a genius, put the two together. <laughs> Bingo! That's a genius. So you've done a few warm-up gigs already? You're... No, this is our first ever live performance. We've done one in... <laughs> well, wow. we've, done, we've, done, we've done one in a little country called France, which doesn't... <laughs> but, uh, ostensibly, this is our first ever British live wow. performance. Yeah. It's called AK What A Life. He's going to perform it live for you now. But, ladies and gentlemen, will you join me in saying thank you to the fabulous Mr Noel Gallagher! <laughs> And thank you. Go and get yourself comfortable. You can go. You can go and get on stage and we can enjoy it. Uh, let me just say thank you to all my guests tonight. Of course, Noah Gallagher, he's going to play live for us with the High Flying Birds right now. But Miranda Hart was on the show.